poor gender ratio at IITs and NITs has been a talking point in Indian academia for some time now. Women are significantly underrepresented in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, the so-called STEM majors. But the picture is changing. This year, 860,000 students applied for the JEE mains entrance examination, of whom 260,000 were female. That's a record 30%. According to the Ministry of Education, the number of female students at IITs increased from 8% in 2016 to 20% 20 in 2021. Another important STEM education centre in India, NITs, had 22.1% female student participation in 2021. The promising trend has been the outcome of recent policies implemented by the IITs and NITs, encouraging female participation in STEM education. In 2016, the government introduced a 14% supernumerary quota for girls at IITs. It was increased to 17% in 2018 and 20% in 2020. The All India Council for Technical Education has been giving out 10,000 Pragati scholarships annually to girls. This scholarship provides 50,000 rupees annually for up to four years. Joining the initiative, tech majors Microsoft and SAP India launched the scaling program Tech Saksham in 2021 to increase women's participation in the tech industry. Underserved women across the country are offered courses on artificial intelligence, cloud computing, web design and digital marketing. And I think what's really changed in the last few years is actually the outcome of a policy that was implemented by the IITs, uh, I think starting 2018 where they have aggressively increased the number of seats specifically for women across all of their programs. Uh, and my understanding is that this has had a big role. Um, and in as much as it's increased the number of uh, women who've actually got seats in IITs, I'm sure it will also have spillover effects in terms of uh, women getting into other top tier engineering colleges, non IITs, uh, and even second tier uh, colleges and so on. You know, more and more women, as you say yourself, are going to be you know, writing the JE entrance exam, uh, and are going to be able to uh, take up degrees in, uh, in technology going forward, which is great to see. As female students' enrollment in STEM majors has begun to grow, engineering colleges in India have come a long way since the 1990s when the boy-girl ratio used to be 10 to 1. This ratio decreased to 7 to 1 in the early 2000s and further to 4 to 1 in the mid and late 2000s. Currently, the IITs have a 20% female student population and NITs 23%. This used to be less than 8% before the supernumerary quota. The representation of female students in architecture, electronics, engineering and IT has grown significantly to almost 50% or even higher today. Unlike engineering, female students' enrollment in medical courses has been high. In 2022, 57% of the 1.8 million students who applied for NEET were female students. I think every profession today we see that there is a, you know, there's a fair amount of presence of women there. And I think it's good to see women coming forward. And as a matter of fact, because these women are there, out who are helming these prime positions, whether they are the CEOs of the company or they're the head of the function, you know, or even our president today is a, is a, is a, is a woman, right? I think these women are inspiring uh, or are kind of transforming the thought process of our society. There have been efforts to bring more women to the fore in all walks of social life, including the three-tier governing system consisting of panchayats, state legislative assemblies and parliament. Article 243D of the Constitution provides for not less than one-third female participation in panchayats. As many as 21 Indian states have gone ahead to make female participation 50% at the panchayat level. State legislative assemblies in India, though, have abysmal women participation. This is highest in the Chhattisgarh Assembly at just 14.44%. Meanwhile, female participation in parliament has been growing, even if it is considerably lower than what it should be. After the last general elections in 2019, women's representation in the Lok Sabha rose to 14.4%. And in the Rajya Sabha, the highest level it has ever reached is 12.24% in 2021. Though female participation in India's political and social space saw little improvements, it is catching up in enrollments for education. Uh, and until women uh, rise to more positions of value, uh, in some areas, that's not going to be reflected in the political sphere at all. So one can imagine in the very long term that if we have a, a private sector or a corporate sector where you have a lot of female leadership, um, that will also slowly trickle into the political sphere where women will just be more valued 
um they will be able to you know take up political office uh and they will be able to rise to to greater heights than they are able to do so now um so in a long term sense sure but do i see this necessarily happening in the kind of the next you know, five years or something like that you know i don't really see it um women's educational outcomes have been increasing like i said for the last three decades um and in fact that's exactly the period that you've described where women's representation in parliament has actually gone down so uh, unfortunately i don't think that those two are going to uh, you know respond to one another in a very short run the latest application rate of female students for the jee mains shows the growing interest of female students in stem majors social scientists see these trends as a welcome drift among women in india If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.